Of course it was the guy the league didn't allow them to trade. Welcome to From Center Ice, my name is Courtney, and I know that I have not been consistent with Blackhawks videos this year, or any videos, Leafs, Icehawks, whatever. We all know that, but one thing that will get me to sit in front of this camera is when the Blackhawks have a 3 to nothing lead going in to the third period, and then they lose 5 to 4 in overtime. Because that's just who this team is. And the best part is Emily Kaplan talked to Jonathan Taves during that second intermission. And he said, when things are going well for us, we get too comfortable and we lay off the gas and that's when we lose or something like that. Paraphrasing, of course. And then what happened? Well, I will tell you what happened, but let's start from the top. So this game was an afternoon game, a 2 p.m. or 2.30 or whatever puck drop because they just never start on time. But it was an afternoon game and the Blackhawks just can't win those. I don't know why that is. They just don't. But it started off looking pretty good. That first period was a high energy period and 10 minutes and two seconds into that first period, Dominic Kubelik, after being scratched in the last game versus the LA Kings, gets on the board. He takes a shot from the high slot. It redirects off of, I believe, Shea Theodore and past Logan Thompson into the net. One nothing Blackhawks. Yay, happy feelings! And the Blackhawks take that one nothing lead into the first intermission, which they were fairly lucky to do. I mean, the shots were only nine to nine. I believe right after that period ended, the Blackhawks had a shot on goal advantage, but now looking at the NHL app, it was tied nine to nine. So I don't know what they did with that count, but I guess the shot total was nine to nine after the first period, and Kevin Lankinen had to come up with some huge saves in that period. To the Hawks' credit, they did a decent job keeping the Vegas Golden Knights to the outside, but that didn't happen for the whole period, and like I said, Kevin Lankinen did have to come up with some big saves, and that he did, seeing as they had that one nothing lead. So we go to the second period, and 14 minutes and 52 seconds into that period, Jonathan Taves keeps the puck in the offensive zone, batting it down off the glass as the Vegas Golden Knights were trying to clear the puck, but the captain gets it. He sends it around behind the net to Alex Dabrinkit, who then finds the captain once again with a beautiful pass for just a tip-in goal. Taves just had to have his stick on the ice and redirect that puck into the back of the net, which he did. The Blackhawks had a two to nothing lead over the Golden Knights. And they were playing pretty well. Again, Kevin Lankinen had to come up with some huge saves, but for the most part, for those first two periods, Chicago was just owning the Knights and they were controlling most of the play. And we saw that again, 18 minutes and 16 seconds into the second period when Patrick Kane has the puck on his stick. He found Caleb Jones wide open in the high slot. Jones takes the shot at the net. The puck just comes off of Logan Thompson into the perfect spot for Dylan Strom to find the rebound and just shoot that puck into the empty net. Three to nothing. Blackhawks. And that's how they went into that second intermission. The shots on goal in the second period were pretty indicative of how the play was going. It was 14 to 8 in favor of the Chicago Blackhawks. So for a running total, if I can do some maths pretty quick, the Blackhawks had a 23 to 17 shot advantage after the second period. And then we go to the third period. One minute and 24 seconds into the third period, Chandler Stevenson breaking down the right wing side and he just shoots the puck on Kevin Lankin and goes under his blocker side arm, and he definitely should have stopped that puck. Of course, it was a well-placed shot by Stevenson. Congrats to you, buddy. You made it three to one. But Kevin should have stopped that one. But it's only one goal. It's three to one. What's the big deal? It's the third period. Well, one minute and one second later, Dylan Coughlin takes a shot, and he's very good at doing that, actually. I was just talking about that on Twitter the other day. He's very good at shooting the puck, but it wasn't his shot that went in into the net. It was the William Carlson tip that went into the net, and Kevin Lankinen was looking pretty upset when it first went in, thinking maybe there was a high stick. It must not have even been close because they didn't even review it. Three to two, still in favor of the Blackhawks.
cocks, but getting too close for comfort. And then three minutes and 16 seconds into the third period. That's right. Three minutes and 16 seconds into the third period. Not since the Carlson goal. Into the third period period, Jack Eichel uses some sort of weird mind control to make Kevin Lonkin and go, I'm a goalie? And he just sneaks around him and Kevin's lying on his side and Jack Eichel puts the puck into the wide open net because Kevin Lonkin forgot he was a goaltender in the NHL and it's three to three. Threes were wild, apparently. The Blackhawks had a three to nothing lead going into the third period where the Vegas Golden Knights scored three goals just over three minutes into the third period. And the game was just falling apart, going completely off the rails, but not to worry, my friends. Because eight minutes and 53 seconds into the third period, after a fantastic offensive zone shift from the Blackhawks, where they kept possession and they were just moving around the ice, passing and, you know, not letting the Golden Knights have it, which they very much needed to do because, as I said before, they scored three goals in just over three minutes. But it's fine, because the conclusion of that great shift in the offensive zone saw Patrick Kane finding Seth Jones with the puck, who then found Alex Dabrinkit with the puck, who is the guy you want to have the puck, and he just sniped that puck past Logan Thompson, and it was four to three in favor of the Blackhawks. So to recap so soon, I said that goal came at eight minutes and 53 seconds into the third period. Nine minutes and 40 seconds into the third period, there is about the entire population of Vegas in front of Kevin Lonkinen and Alex Petrangelo because who else shoots the puck from the point? And again, it wasn't Alex Petrangelo's shot that made the puck go into the net. It was Kirby Doc's leg. Tie game, four to four. Now, again, we need a recap already because a lot happened in this game. The Blackhawks went into the third period with a three to nothing lead over the Vegas Golden Knights. The Golden Knights proceeded to score three goals in just over three minutes to start the third period, which made it a tie game. Alex Dabrinkit, bless his soul, scored a goal to make it four to three in favor of the Blackhawks. And then Alex Petrangelo, the ex St. Louis Blue, technically scored to make it four to four. Now, if you didn't watch the game, or maybe even if you did watch the game, you'd say, what was Kevin Lonkinen doing in this period to where they could tie it up and then tie it up again after they had zero goals going into the third. And I'm here to say you could only really blame him for two of them. Yes, he needs to stop that Chandler Stevenson goal to start the third period. It went between his body and his arm. He's gotta have it. And while I would prefer blaming Jack Eichel for using some sort of mind control to make him forget he was a goaltender on Eichel's goal, that one's on Kevin too. But Vegas' second goal, it was tipped high in the air right in front of him. There was not much he could really do there. Of course, sometimes goaltenders can stop those high deflections, but I'm not going to sit here and blame Kevin for that shot. And then Petrangelo's goal. Now, let me ask you something, my friends. Can you see Kevin Lonkinen's head? Why is Kirby Doc right in front of him. What is your purpose there, Kirby? Because you don't block the shot. It goes off of your leg into the net. Maybe that was your attempt to block the shot. We'll just go ahead and give you the benefit of the doubt there. That was your attempt to block a shot. Kirby isn't a defenseman. Maybe he just forgot how to do that. But again, looking at this, would you blame the goaltender for this going into the net? No. You wouldn't. So you blame Kevin Lonkinen for two of the four goals in the third period. If that were the case and the other two hadn't have gone in, the game would have been three to two or maybe four to two if you give Alex to break it his goal. And the Blackhawks win! So I am not here to hear people say that this game is on Kevin. Yes, he did need to be better in the third period, but he made some incredible stops in the first two periods to keep it 
scoreless for Vegas. And credit to Logan Thompson, too. Of course, it was 3 nothing heading into the third, but that's only three goals, which isn't bad for a third-string goaltender. He's also one of the most confusing goalies I have ever watched. The few games I've watched of Vegas recently, watching him in net, it's like pucks should be going past him. He should be losing these games, and he just doesn't. So if you are a Vegas Golden Knights fan, or a Henderson Silver Knights fan, or just a Logan Thompson fan, please explain to me his style of goaltending because it's ugly and he confuses me, but he gets wins. At the end of the day, that's all that really matters. I just need to understand what's going on with him in the blue paint. Anyway, regulation ended with the game being tied four to four, so to overtime we go for the second straight game. Both teams had some chances. I'm not gonna sit here and say that the Blackhawks just rolled over and died in overtime because they certainly didn't. They were getting scoring chances. One in particular that sticks out to me was Dylan Strom keeping the puck in the offensive zone. Congratulations to you, Dylan. Finding Dominic Kubelik all alone, busting in toward Logan Thompson. He tried to get the shot off. To me, it looked like the puck rolled off of his stick. I'd have to watch it again. Either way, obviously the puck didn't go into the net, but it was a fantastic play from Strom. Unfortunately, two minutes and five seconds into overtime, Kevin Lonkinen loses his stick, and then again, the entire population of Vegas was in front of him, including Dodonov, who Vegas tried to trade to the Anaheim Ducks, and the league said, mm, actually, you can't do that. That's a whole nother topic that I'm not going to discuss in this video, but that was a wild ride from start to finish. But anyway, the league shut that down, so Dodonov is still with the Vegas Golden Knights, and the puck goes off of him into the net past Kevin Lonkin, and it was tipped basically right on top of Kevin. You can't blame him for that. And the Vegas Golden Knights win 5-4 to four in a game the Blackhawks were leading 3 to nothing going into the third period. I said this on Twitter, I'll say it again here. They were doing their best Toronto Maple Leafs impression in this one. And look, I know it doesn't really matter. The Blackhawks aren't going to make the playoffs. It would have been nice to keep Vegas to zero points as they were technically not in a playoff spot before this game. I think they may have hopped over Dallas into a wild card spot after this one because they were only one point behind them if I'm recalling correctly, but Dallas does have like four games in hand. But I turned off my TV after that game ended and I immediately came up here, so this is my instant reaction and that is why I'm still upset about that because they were winning three to nothing and they blew it in one period. One period and change if you count overtime. But they blew a three to nothing lead and lost the game. That is the first time in Vegas Golden Knights history, which is all of like five years, that Vegas has won after trailing by three goals in the third period. You're welcome, Vegas. I'm glad we get to be that one win. We are just so generous. But again, I know it doesn't matter, and there are a lot of positives to take out of this game. Looking at those first two periods, Kevin Lonkin and making some massive stops in net and just generally looking calm and in control of the crease was great to see. He had a really good rookie season last year. Of course, the team was all over the place, so maybe the stats don't really account for that. But he was really good on a bad team, and then he had to play spot duty to Mark andre Fleury so far this season, which I'm not going to be upset about because we got Mark. Andre freaking flurry for a few months, and that was just wonderful. Because you just can't be mad when you think about Marc Andre Fleury just smiling away like the ray of sunshine that he is. But now I have to stop thinking about Marc Andre Fleury because I have to be angry because the Blackhawks pissed away a three to nothing lead. But anyway, Lonkinen looked really good. The Blackhawks were scoring goals. They scored three of them going into that third, and then they added a fourth from Debrinket, which was a beautiful shot. Jonathan Taves got another goal, Dylan Strom got another goal, and really good for Dominic Kubelik to get back in the goal column, especially after being scratched in that last game. And again, the Blackhawks basically controlled play for those first two periods, but then Vegas woke up and came to play 
in the third and them being a good team just took over, I guess. They are also a team that's been very up and down because as you recall so soon, I said they were out of a playoff spot, which is not something that we have said about the Vegas Golden Knights since they became a thing. But there's not much Blackhawks hockey left in this season and I know that I am personally going to miss hockey so much in the off season and the summer, and if I had to take a guess, if you're out there watching hockey videos on YouTube, that you too will also miss hockey during the summer. As much as it's nice having a break and, you know, going on vacation, going up to the cabin, being a typical hockey person, all of that is nice, but we are all here because we love the sport of hockey, and for better or worse, we love our teams. So I want to try to enjoy this final stretch. So once I come down from being angry about the them giving up a three to nothing lead. I will take away the positives from this game and they had a very positive road trip overall. After losing three straight games to Boston, Minnesota, and Winnipeg, they won their first two games of this road trip and took this one to overtime. If a bad team, such as the Chicago Blackhawks, goes on a road trip and takes five out of six possible points, you will take that every day of the week. The first game of that trip was against the Anaheim Ducks, Kevin Lonkinen was in net for that one. He looked very good in that game as well. He made 27 saves on 29 shots and the Blackhawks won 4-2. to two. We had goals from Taylor Radish, Patrick Kane, Alex Debrinkit, Dylan Strom because of course we did. That first line is something else right now. And good for Radish getting on the board again for the Blackhawks on the power play. If he can keep scoring power play goals for this team, it's really going to lessen the blow of the Brandon Hagel trade, which it still hurts and I'm still upset about it because I was a big Brandon Hagel fan. Still am, but I can't, I can't root for the Tampa Bay Lightning. I wish Hagel all of the personal success though, but we've got to move on from it because that's what this team is now, and I'm very happy to see Taylor Radish getting on the score sheet. The very next night, the Blackhawks were in Los Angeles to take on the Kings, and I saw on Twitter that the Blackhawks haven't played the Kings in like three years, or maybe it was just they haven't played in LA in that long. Of course, because of the pandemic shortened season and then the condensed schedule last year where you only played within your division, but that just seems absolutely insane to me. Anyway, the Black Blackhawks won that game too. That one did go to the shootout. Colin Delia was in net for that one. His first NHL start in his home state. And Delia made 43 saves on 46 shots. The shot total in that game was 46 to 31. But the Blackhawks got goals from Patrick Kane, Alex Dabrinkit, and Sam Lafferty. And then the only goal of the shootout came from Alex Dabrinkit to win the game for Chicago. So again, there were positives to take away from this game today against the Vegas Golden Knights. It stings because of how they lost it, but this team needs positivity going forward and getting those five points out of a six possible total on this road trip is a great thing for them. But that's all I got for this one. The Blackhawks are back in action Monday night when the Buffalo Sabres come to town. Puck drop is at 7.30 p.m. Central Time. And now I ask you, how are you feeling about the Chicago Blackhawks? What are you looking for for the rest of the season out of this team? Are there any players in particular that you're going to be paying closer attention to? Let me know all of that in the comments down below. And if you would like to hear more from me or from Center Ice, you can head on over to fromcenterice.com where there's links to absolutely everything over there, but if you are just more of a social media person, you can find links to all of those platforms down in the description. And with that, thank you so very much for tuning in. I greatly appreciate it. If you haven't yet done so, subscribe to this channel, give this video a like, and I will catch you all in the next video. Bye, guys.